Did you know that the average person spends three hours a day streaming content? Well, I'm here to make sure that you're using the right device when you do it. What's up everybody, I'm Jason Howell and today, I'm gonna compare three popular options in the set-top streamer category. The all-new Google TV streamer, the latest Apple TV 4K from 2022, and the 2024 on 4K Pro. Now I've got all three here with me, so let's break down what makes each one unique. But before we do that, full disclosure, Google sent me the Google TV streamer for review, and I purchased the Apple TV 4K and the on 4K Pro for this video. All opinions are my own, absolutely no editorial sign-off from any any of the companies in this roundup or ever on this channel. So first let's talk about the audio and video capabilities. After all, these are media streamers and they share a lot, but also have some pretty distinct features between them. Perhaps most importantly, all three support 4K 60 frames per second, along with HDR10, HDR10+, and Dolby Vision HDR compatibility. You're gonna get all those vibrant, high quality visuals that you'll really notice on the really big screen. Also, it's important to note that the Apple TV 4K is the only one of the bunch to have a true 4K UI experience. The other two scale up from 1080p, but the content itself, rest assured, is 4K through and through. Might not be something everyone notices, but it definitely caught my eye. All three support HDMI CEC, which ties supported hardware together in a very seamless way, which is nice. Now on the audio front, they all support Dolby Atmos and Dolby Digital Plus. So you'll get that immersive high quality audio experience out of the box. But they definitely differ in this kind of support beyond those specs. The Google TV streamer and the On 4K Pro both offer DTS X support, but it's important to note that neither support DTS pass through, which will disappoint hardcore media nerds. The Apple TV 4K has wider audio codec support that includes, obviously, Apple's ecosystem tie-ins, things like spatial audio with AirPods. And finally, both the Apple TV 4K and the On 4K Pro support Wi-Fi 6 while the Google TV streamer, oddly, only supports Wi-Fi 5. A bit of a missed opportunity, if you ask me. Now let's take a closer look at each device and what they offer. We'll start in the middle of the pack with the Google TV streamer. Priced at $99.99, the Google TV streamer comes with 32 gigs of storage and four gigs of RAM running on a MediaTek MT8696 processor, which happens to be a three-year-old processor at this point. Mm. Now that might be a big downside, but as you'll see in a few minutes, this is surprisingly standard for this category of devices. Now on the back, you do get a gigabit ethernet port, which is a very welcome high-speed addition, especially if you move a lot of high-resolution media content around your home media system. You also have this USB-C port for power, but something to know about that port. If you purchase a USB-C hub and plug it in, you can add capabilities to the streamer, like perhaps an external drive for expanded storage or even a mouse and keyboard. How's that for tips and tricks? One of the standout features of the Google TV streamer is its smart home integration. It supports both Matter and Thread protocols on top of Google's own smart home ecosystem. Essentially, the Google TV streamer turns your TV into a pretty capable smart home hub, complete with on-screen controls that I absolutely love to use. The Google TV streamer remote is reasonably pared down and focused. It's actually powered by two AAA batteries, not rechargeable, unfortunately. Yes, the remote has a few pre-programmed, pre-labeled buttons for Netflix and YouTube, but on the plus side, it has an additional customizable multifunction button. I have that set to summon the Google Home panel on screen for smart home controls, but you can do other things with it as well, like switch inputs on your TV or launch any app of your choosing. But seriously, home control at the tap of a button? Come on. There's also a remote finder feature on the Google TV streamer. You just hit the button on the back of the device itself and then listen for the tone that is emitted from your remote control. My one complaint here is that it could stand to be a little louder. You know, once it's covered with blankets, it's pretty hard to hear. Google continues to lean into everything AI as a standout feature, and they've taken in a similar approach with the Google TV streamer. Things like AI-powered content suggestions, which learn from your viewing habits to recommend shows and movies you might like. Also, AI-powered summaries of content and reviews via Google's Gemini AI model. Even a generative AI screensaver experience that is a heck of a lot of fun to play around with, especially with kids. And yes, 
Google Assistant is also on board, sharing AI space with Gemini for voice search and voice controls, all accessible from the included remote. Now, the Google TV streamer offers 150 free live channels. This is a new feature called Free Play, at least in the US at the time of this recording, and more than 10,000 apps via the Play Store, including some games in there. And finally, the design of the Google TV streamer is really intended to blend in with the environment. It's a simple pill-shaped, flat-topped piece of hardware that looks really nice on the shelf, though I would prefer to have a black option to blend in better on my living room tabletop. Next up is the Apple TV 4K from 2022. It starts at $129 for the 64 gig storage model with a 128 gig option available for $150. It's powered by the A15 Bionic chip, an incredibly capable chip that was also released three years ago when the device was brand new, and also found in the iPhone 13 and 14 series. The cheaper model here doesn't have an ethernet port, but when you pay extra for the 128 gig model, you will get a gigabit ethernet port upgrade as well. Now what sets the Apple TV 4K apart is its deep integration with the Apple ecosystem. If you're already invested in Apple products, this might be a no brainer. That tight integration continues to be a selling point, a huge one for Apple fans. And Apple knows it. <laughs> Boy, do they. So in the end, you benefit if you're all Apple all the time. The included Siri remote is pretty trim and stripped down to basics, which is actually, I think, a good thing. It also feels incredibly durable. It's made of metal instead of plastic. Buttons are firm and clicky. Everything about the remote feels well-made and built to stand the test of time. And this is nice, it has a rechargeable battery that charges via USB-C. So no more swapping in new batteries like the others in this rundown. I absolutely love the D-pad. It has this unique touch sensitivity that allows for swiping actions to better control whatever is on screen, which is incredibly intuitive and easy to adapt to. I honestly wish more remotes did this, but I imagine that might lead to lawsuits. So don't hold your breath. Yes, Siri is on board here. You just hold down the Siri button on the side of the remote and use your voice for all kinds of device and content controls. That does include smart home control if you happen to have home kit devices sprinkled throughout your house. I do not, but I know there are a lot of you out there. The App Store on Apple TV 4K is a big advantage too because of its comprehensive collection of apps and games. Apple TV 4K brings some more unconventional features as well, like Apple Arcade with a wide swath of high quality games, as well as Apple Fitness Plus, so you no longer have to go into the gym if you don't want to. Don't get too excited. You'll still be paying a monthly fee for all that fitness. Design-wise, the Apple TV 4K is black as can be, which is perhaps the best color to blend into the other technology trying to stay out of the way in your living room. It's shiny, basic, and pretty unassuming. It's not really meant to grab your attention. It's just there to do its job, and it does it very well. Almost too well. This Android guy is pretty impressed. Hey, if you're getting any value from this video, please hit that like button, or even better, subscribe so you don't miss more like it on the horizon. And thank you. It's great having you here. Last but not least, we have the On 4K Pro. This is the budget-friendly option at just $49.88. Now, don't let the price fool you. This little device is very capable, and surprisingly, it's on par with the Google TV streamer at half the cost. The On 4K Pro comes with 32 gigs of storage and three gigs of RAM. It's running on an Amlogic S905X4 processor, which launched first back in 2019. Oof. A five-year-old processor out of the box on a device that just launched last summer isn't the best direction in my opinion. Now one nice feature is the included USB-A 3.0 port. This is a great inclusion because it allows for easy external storage expansion if 32 gigs of storage isn't enough. No additional dongle purchase necessary like with the streamer. Also back there is an ethernet port though do note that it only supports 100 megabits per second which isn't really adequate for many high res media files you might be throwing around. This alone will be reason enough for the most ardent media fans to pass over this option. The On 4K Pro has an awesomely unique feature that essentially turns it into a Google Home device thanks to the onboard mic and speaker. This enables hands-free voice control so you can navigate your TV and your smart home controls without even picking up the remote. And I mean, with a feature like that, do you really need a remote? Speaking of the remote, it's the busiest of the bunch with four dedicated buttons for streaming services like Netflix and YouTube, and like the streamer, a programmable multifunction button, which is very nice, but it's backlit, so it's easier to use in total darkness. 
and it too has a remote finder feature similar to the Google TV streamer. So similar in fact that the tones are identical. The On 4K Pro offers a bunch of live streaming selections for free. In fact, the remote has a big button that takes you right there. The home screen includes the Gemini assisted show and review summaries like on the Google TV streamer. And of course you can access the Google Play Store integrated in the OS to install plenty of other apps and some games. Though really not that many games when compared to Apple's offering, which is kind of disappointing. Design wise, the On 4K Pro is quite attractive out of the box with a mesh cloth top that allows the onboard speaker to play through unobstructed. Do be forewarned though, these mesh designs get dirty over time, so be sure to keep it clean. So I guess that means you need to add clean streaming device to your weekly chores list or something. Now that we've looked at each device individually, let's take a look at how they perform. The Google TV streamer and On 4K Pro both use Google TV. The experience on both devices is actually quite similar to each other with a few key differences. One being performance. The Google TV streamer is a bit snappier thanks to its extra gig of RAM and slightly more modern processor, although, you know, still dated. It's also worth mentioning that the Google TV streamer is running Android TV 14, while the On 4K Pro runs Android TV 12. Though you'd never know they were running different versions of the OS by looking at them, no word yet on whether the On 4K Pro will get an update to the latest version of the OS. The Apple TV 4K by comparison is rich, responsive, and snappy. It's running its own separate OS, that's Apple's tvOS 17, which Apple users will feel right at home with. It's an excellent experience for Apple device natives especially, and yeah, things just feel really fluid, intentional, and responsive. It's quite nice. So then, which one should you choose? As with everything in life, it really depends. I hate that answer. If you want a balance of features and price, the Google TV streamer is a solid choice. Its smart home capabilities and AI-powered suggestions make it a versatile option with some very unique bonuses. If you're deeply invested in the Apple ecosystem and want the most polished streaming box in the list here, definitely go for the Apple TV 4K. And if you're on a budget, but still want an extremely capable 4K streamer with some unique features like hands-free voice control, the On 4K Pro is indeed an excellent value. Ultimately, the best choice depends on your specific needs and budget. Each of these devices offers a great streaming experience with its own unique strengths. As for me, what can I say? The Google TV streamer checks most of the boxes for my living room and being a Google Pixel household as we are, it just kind of feels right. But honestly, any one of these would be a welcome addition to our entertainment setup. Just not all of them at the same time ever again. Definitely check out my full review of the Google TV streamer and follow it up with my full review of the On 4K Pro while you're at it. And do let me know in the comments which option appeals most to you. Or do you have one of these already and how do you feel about it? Drop that in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. It's great to have you here. I'm Jason Howell. We'll see you next time.